Oh, look at this. I got. I forgot how to work this thing. <laughs> oh my lord! Oh, we're back. We are cooking with oil. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Welcome back! Holy cow! It's been a long time, boys. Hello, and girl. Thank you. For Is it us you're looking for? <laughs> Man, I. Can you see it in your eyes? I miss this song. Man, I just, that is one of the best songs. I miss out there. it. So I'll much. do it again. Do it again. All right. Ah, man. Welcome right. to season dos. We made it. Who, who thought we were going to be this far? I didn't. No one did. I, Everyone no, I've talked to is no. like, "You guys aren't coming back. <laughs> you guys aren't coming back from season one." Yeah. So you know who you are. Um, if everything goes well, when we get, we edit this thing well and it actually makes it out, um, we did it. We made it to season we, two. We made it to season two. This might be the only episode in season two, but we did it. Right. We made it there. That's <laughs> that, that was that was our whole goal in life. Last time you saw us, we were on the back stairs. Mm. That's right. We were. And uh, we didn't know what was going to happen. We did not. But and now we're here for we're, you. We're back with the back stairs podcast. Mm. Oh, man. Oh, wow. Miss those words. Um, Aaron, man. what have you been up to? Well, I was just, just going to say... Uh, we should probably, you know, this is a new season. Maybe new new fans. Maybe they're not going to even look at first season. You, uh, another, um, sorry, I'm having like multiple thoughts. So I was like, I was, I was just saying, maybe we should introduce ourselves. Like, mm-hmm. like I'm Aaron. Um, I, Aaron. I have the orange mic. Can we introduce each other? Oh, I feel like that's Ooh. already kind of a tradition around here is that we right. give each other, give people terrible intros. Mm. Oh, okay. Okay. Nothing <laughs> against you because your intros are great. I, but the I, guy I, that's talking the whole time that you're trying to introduce somebody is a schmuck. So you you're shine. beautiful and you're talented and you're beautifully talented. Beautifully <laughs> talented, Aaron. Yes, exactly. Yes. I'm going to start with Aaron. All right. Okay. You introduce Aaron. Aaron Jump. Schofield, known to some as a designer and others as a lover. I'm very few of that. <laughs> How <laughs> many? <laughs> He's a lover of designing. Uh. He's multifaceted, multi-talented, and has recently started to show those talents off on stage, including his second annual presentation of his skills on stage uh, on the Oompa stage. For those who don't know, Oxford Hills Music Performing Arts Association, he's just coming off of the second uh, production of his lifetime as Leaf Coney Bear in the 25th annual Pentagon Explain Me and he's great and he's beautifully talented and beautiful and talented in Aaron Schofield. That was a long intro. Wow. It was, it was, it was a little messy. I Listen, I was trying to show my appreciation and well, love I, for you and all you did was smack it. I appreciate it. I mean, I he was, definitely, he was definitely showing love there. I feel like Maybe. you need to introduce me now and all right. everyone's going to see what type how, of... How it's done? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Aaron, so who do we have? Ladies and gentlemen. Who is it? Um, one of my closest, dearest friends, m- some may say best friend, John Potter. Yeah, who he would say that. Has, <laughs> right, absolutely. Has not only graced us with his presence on stage, uh, but recently behind the stage as a producer. Oh, brother. Which, talking beforehand, said he absolutely loved it. He did love he's, it. He's like he loved a, it. a 10 Can't out get of 10. Enough of it. A 10 out of 10 mm-hmm. would recommend. Yes. He's going to produce every show for the rest I think he, of time. Yeah, he, he is, he's, he's he is executive producer laureate. Yes. He's, he's, he's decided to part. retire from being on stage. Man, and this is getting kind of long, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Just the exact amount of time. John Potter. Thank you. Oh, Cue applause. Wow. Dang it. That is amazing. <laughs> Scott, would you like to introduce our executive producer? I feel like I should I introduce like. oh, wait a Scott you first. You go last. No, okay. Yeah, that's right. Okay. <laughs> Okay. All right, next we have a man, a myth, a legend, a guy with a face for radio and a voice for television. <laughs> <laughs> yes. A guy with a killer Scottish accent and an even more killer mustache. What about those loins? Those loins, Fiona. Oh, Fiona. See? Oh, sorry. See the two audience. <laughs> you don't know that yet. You had to be there. <laughs> You'll catch up. We have the one, the only, the talented Scott Parsons. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I what about those it. loins? <laughs> those loins, they are burning for ya, Fiona. <laughs> Oh, you get, you get end. nothing. 
Mm-hmm. I like it. But yes, I'm back. And, and now I don't know what accent I'm talking with. Yeah, all right. It's so happy to be back here. And we're, now we're going to introduce our executive producer. Who? Our amazing. For that's spe- that's spectac- the word I was looking for. Yeah. Spectacular. Uh-huh. Talented. <laughs> and? Beautiful. <laughs> oh. 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 Wow. Beautifully talented. I knew that was coming. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. She's got talent and beauty to spare. Scott's on brand. Yes, absolutely. Who is it? She is the one. Mm. The only. Mm. The incredible. Do you like the silence? (laughs) The spectacular Janelle Ray. Aaron, can we edit some of that out and post? (laughs) Don't worry. I'll... (laughs) This is gonna take two seconds for. <laughs> no, he's gonna he's gonna double the length of the pauses in between. Yes. The only problem is that video is forever. <laughs> it's funny I can edit a video also. Oh, oh no. Um. So, uh, Scott. Um, Aaron, you're you're here, um, and uh, I'm glad that you're back, and not the character that you were playing, that. The character was um, that quite... was something. I, I I don't know. Is it your guys' fault? I th- I I kind yeah, of feel maybe, like you guys are maybe, to blame. Maybe we should we should this. we should step back and just for for those who haven't listened to our previous two episodes, we were talking about auditioning, um, and we were trying. Uh, we asked each other if we were auditioning for a twenty fifth annual spelling bee, uh, and Scott was the only one that said no. No, I'm not doing it. And um, if I remember correctly, you did it. Yes. Pretty sure. Yes. Yep. Yep. I did. I did the mm-hmm. show. What? What? Made, what made you change your mind? Well, I mean, you guys for one, Kristen for the the no, fourth friend of no, the podcast, number one, number one fan. fan, Kristen Searles, number one fan, uh, director of the show, um, wanted me to do the show. Uh, Were you paid? It, because it kind of seemed like you were yes <laughs> well you know quite handsomely i should say as well <laughs> it was it was yeah it was fun it was a chance to do some character work not something i was really thinking of at the time mm. but uh what once i got an idea of the character i says oh okay this is this is something good you should you should do this yeah uh i wasn't Totally on board with it, but I said, you're going to get something out of this. So, yeah. Great. I did it. And, mm. and Regret it? or No, 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 absolutely not. I don't regret it. Um, it was a lot of fun, a lot of struggle, a lot of... Uh, but there was some pain in there. Yeah. Um, it was... It was not easy, but it was a great learning experience. So, mm. I mean, I would recommend that. Yeah. Anytime. Mm. So yeah. We uh we razz you about your age, but really, yeah. I mean, your the the age difference between you and other people in shows is not not usually as big as the one with this show for the most part. It was from beginning to end. It was there was a separation from from the whole group. I mean, mm. usually when we do a show, we we get that camaraderie going. Yeah. And at the beginning, I had no music to do because mm. I wasn't singing any. Mm. Uh, you weren't I dancing. Went, I, I wasn't. I didn't have any choreography to do because I wasn't dancing. Yeah. Uh, so you know, and that's usually the first stuff we're working on. So I'm not around much. So I'm not getting to to uh, you know connect with you guys like I usually do. Mm. Um, and then I went on vacation for a week, which was already planned ahead of time. And you know, I, right? You know, I told them that, like, well, I have this vacation planned. I gotta, I gotta go on that because costs a lot of money to go on vacation. Mm. <laughs> um, so, but it was like right after that when I got back from vacation. Then we really got into blocking. We really got into working on the show. Yeah, and I really got in. You know, I said after my vacation, then. You know, I had an idea of how I wanted my character to look, so I wanted to go with that. 
and 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 just let it go from there. So, uh, yeah, from the time I got back from my vacation, it was it was Doug Panch time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we'll, we'll throw up a, now that we're recording. We now, now now that we're recording our our podcast. Um, we'll we'll throw up a, a photo of of you. Because <laughs> It'd be prudent to throw like a before and after, <laughs> like when he f- put the picture on of him fully, you know, cleaned yeah. up and yeah. It's quite the transformation. Yeah. <laughs> I usually I get really upset when people take a vacation in the middle of a show. Like I've been in some shows where the lead just like disappears for two weeks, <laughs> and I get mad. But Scott, you came back like charged and ready, and mm. it was like. That was the moment. Yeah. And so I wasn't upset at all. I was like, you go, take vacations, yeah. Scott, have fun. <laughs> and that was kind of, I mean, I wasn't supposed to be connected to you guys. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that must have spellers. fed into the character. Yeah, I think it was, I think it was um, helpful for that. You know, yeah. I wasn't supposed to connect with you guys because we weren't connected in the show. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I wasn't supposed to understand your love for spelling. I'm like, it, that was all foreign to me. Mm-hmm. So. Nerd. Staying away from that, yeah, that definitely helped. It was hard, you know, because I want to be part of the crowd. You know, mm-hmm. I I love that, and I love being part of it and being in on the inside jokes. And I didn't miss out much on that, but no, no. But it was it was hard at first. It was hard through the whole thing. I struggled with the look because my ego didn't like it, but. Uh, I'm a better I'm a better actor for it I think mm-hmm. because you know I really learned some stuff there and I yeah. I know what I want to do better next time. Mm. Yeah, no, that's that's a very interesting because you you went with a mustache for uh, Doug Panch mm-hmm. and like a little bit of like a comb over <laughs> greasy look, um, which you looked fantastic. You did. It, it was some of the best like looking character majestic really <laughs> um yeah. even down to your costume your mm-hmm. shirt being oh. just like a lid like a smidge too small on you like mm-hmm. yeah it just everything mm-hmm. was perfect I the mean, big the, tacky mustard tie when yeah. you when you did the matt foley yeah <laughs> you yourself that. back up oh my gosh there was definitely matt foley in there there was uh uh, uh my brother always told me about a an old uh school teacher he had and uh, there was a little bit of him because my brother tends to tell stories multiple times. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I've, so I've heard the same story many times. And so I had a little bit of this high school teacher that he always told me about in him. And, and uh, yeah, he, and he saw it too. He told me later that he saw <laughs> that. So that was, that was nice. Um, but really the only time I loved the character was when I was playing the character mm, okay. yeah. for the shows. Yeah. Otherwise, it, otherwise, I was like, uh, "Give yeah. me away! Give he's me away!" He's supposed to ick you out, though, and yeah. I, I think that at his core, he's kind of icked out with himself. So I think yeah. him giving you that feeling probably only helped your character. Yeah, yeah maybe. More. Yeah, yeah. That's a good thought. I yeah, like there's it. some self loathing in that yeah in that guy for in, sure. the, in that fashion sense <laughs> in oh, the man. fashion sense uh, yeah fashion sense fashion, fashion, fashion sense, sense for fashion. sure yeah no like we were talking earlier like you you did the mustache and you the comb over um and you had to wear it into your life like yeah. your day-to-day thing yeah. and i, I but yeah people didn't understand what <laughs> what, the, what the heck are you doing all the like, zoom well, meetings I, I, I gotta, <laughs> yeah i'm doing zoom meetings at work and you know i <laughs> I have a professional life that I have to get into, <laughs> and I'm looking like Doug Panch. Well, I think my people want to know your boss, right? Didn't like you very much. My boss hated it. <laughs> what? He what was about like he, he, every time he saw me, he's like, I, I, I can't deal with this. You know, I can't deal with this look. <laughs> What'd your lady I was think? Like, what, what did Kathy she, think? You know, the other boss, Kat, Kathy, didn't like it much. <laughs> oh, Doug. She, she did not like the Doug Panch look. Huh. She she was like, how much how much longer you got to do this for? <laughs> she was she she was not a fan. <laughs> no, I, I had and I guess get, it's that's yeah. better than than the opposite. I don't know. She likes Doug Panch now better than she likes me. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I want you to keep the mustache. <laughs> yeah. uh, 
So I I went baby face. I was like, speaking of which, we yeah. had the exact opposite. Yeah, and it was a uh, it was I think I was trying to narrow it down. But I think it was like I think the last eight years, yeah, ten years. I think I I don't think I've shaved since we've been married. Not completely, baby. Yeah. yeah. So that's that's eight years at least. Yeah. So, I mean, that's it was right. it was, it was a I've shock seen too. You, I think I've seen you without a beard. Mm-hmm. But there's been a big mustache. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I think that's like one of the like the first times, like for me. So there's there was a lot of people that I met or that saw me for the first time without facial hair, and they're like, "You should tell the story." Oh. About- <laughs> so my my uh, I get to uh, the off my office early, and uh, I'm sitting in like we have like a little waiting room area, and I'm sitting there doing some work on my phone, and my boss walks in, and he's like. Oh, can I help you? As as I was, I was thinking, he was like joking around, and uh, I was like, "No, no, I'm good." And he's like, "Is the is the secretary helping you?" I'm like, "No, I'm I'm good. Just sitting here." <laughs> and he's like, "Are you sure?" And he starts walking over to me. He's like, "Oh my gosh, Aaron!" <laughs> like, had no idea it was me for like a solid like minute and a half. There's just like this like conversation of like, "Are you sure you don't need some help? Who are you?" <laughs> yeah. It's like, man. So so that kind of makes me think of Zach. Or, uh, Efron? No. Oh. Galifianakis? No. Zach Schneider? Zach just joined us in Spelling Bee. Oh. oh. Zach Balcom. Balcom. Yes. Zach, who, uh, our new friend that just joined us. Shout at, out to you, Oakland. Zach, if you're Shout listening. Shout out, Zach. Yeah. And Karen. Hello, Karen. Oh, Karen. But uh, cat. Zach. And when She's I more when I cat. first came back from the vacation, that's when I shaved, right. had the mustache showing, and started to part the hair, and everybody's commenting on it. And Zach, not knowing me because it's his first show with us, he's like, "Oh, is this for the show?" <laughs> 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 and somebody com- somebody commented that. Uh, no, oh no, he always looks like that. And I was like, "Well, he doesn't <laughs> know." He didn't know, so right. you know, we'll give him the benefit of the doubt. But that's yeah. right. So, Aaron, we've we've talked a lot about Lancelot, of course. Yes, but this was a much different experience than Lancelot. It must have been. Yeah, yeah, huge. There were some recurring themes. He spoke French mm-hmm. in true. both shows. Yeah, and he did he it much better in, in the second on one. something. He did. He he glided. Yeah, as a uh, ethereal. True. Uh, being yeah um and there you know there were god cameos in both shows that aaron was present for i in both shows i had to play a gay guy mm-hmm. yep there was a definite callback with the coming in on the skateboard as to as uh, jesus and it, then it, it, and the uh tim the enchanter tim enchanter yeah it definitely had it. the same energy i feel like yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. definitely yeah, no, it was a, it was a, it was a fun show. Um, it uh, it, it's interesting looking back on your first experience and then your second experience, like the comparing the two of them and yep. things that I liked about the first show that I didn't like about the second show and vice mm-hmm. versa. Um, but but overall, I really enjoyed myself. Yeah. I had a, a blast. Um, my character um, was is like a, a redheaded homeschooler um that is just super energetic uh and growing up i was a partially redheaded uh homeschooler uh that's super is, energetic can, it, can, it, can i ask what is partially redheaded i i my hair on my head is brown but, but my, everywhere else it's <laughs> just kidding i'm kidding <laughs> <laughs> okay all right no it's like my, my beard is red because um, well i get that i'm i i've got kind of the same thing yeah going. Um, but basically I felt like I was raised as like a, a, a stepchild. It's like, <laughs> it's like it's like a redheaded ch- stepchild. <laughs> no. Um, cause so, you were definitely not a stepchild to your father. No, no. they're no. identical. Nobody, they're nobody the same. would think that. <laughs> no. Um, but no, it was the, the way I would get into character each night is, um, or like how I developed my character. I, I just took all the 
the things that we block as adults, like all the, the impulses, all the, the, oh, I, I should act like I'm interested right now type of like things that we do. I shouldn't pick my nose right now. I shouldn't like all these things that we do as an adult to look like an adult. I just shut off. And so like it really honestly wasn't acting. It was just like becoming who I really am. I Primal like so, Aaron. Yeah. So like the, yeah. you strip back all the adult in me and it's just, that's who I was mm. for the show. So I really didn't notice any difference. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I like that comment. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, no, I, yeah. I had a blast watching you, especially mm-hmm. in your first show. Even though it was a musical, we really didn't get to see no your singing chops. And you were bummed about that. I remember you being so bummed. Mm. Yeah, like my my uh, the only solo that I had in uh, in Spam a lot was. My name is Lancel Law. All right, we can't do any more than that for copyright. And that, that's yeah, it. copyright. I had, yeah, we don't I had, own the rights. I had like a 30 second little thing. And Can I was, get a redacted? Um, and but but this show, I had two full mm-hmm. songs yeah. by myself, and they were rangy songs. Too. I mean, you had to belt really high notes, yep. and and I hit every one of them perfectly. <laughs> you did. You did really great. I think you impressed a lot of people. With your singing, yeah. it's I've, not easy to do that kind of stuff, and it's not easy yeah. to sing. It's not inherent for people to be able to sing and act at the same time, and you mm. were your character so the whole time. Yeah, it, it, like the whole time. Yeah, yeah. and Absolutely. not only the last couple of years, just going through what the world's gone through, I've found myself being a little more, if it was even possible, a little more sentimental. But the first time watching you sing it, oh my gosh! Mm-hmm. I mean, like I, I probably had a tear in my eye. It was yeah. you killed it, and uh, thank you. Yeah, just very proud of. Oh yeah, what you were able to do on stage. The first time that he sang, it, the first time you sang it in a rehearsal, I cried. But I cry oh, every time that sings. Guys, <laughs> I mean, I didn't. I had a tear. I, didn't, I actually are, cried. You so guys are fine. sappy. I, well, I, I never cried when you said. It. <laughs> I enjoyed it, but I, that one didn't make me cry. Uh-huh. Well, thank you. You was, was that pants? <laughs> if you would have been in Scott no. mode, would you have cried? No, I don't think so. Was it the mustache? No. Did it get in the way? Mm. No. Yeah, maybe it was the baby face. I, did, I didn't <laughs> care for. I don't know. I don't know. It was. It was. It, yeah. You did great. I just thank it you. Wasn't that yeah. sentimental? Yeah, it, was, it wasn't like a touching Nailed song. It. Nailed it. Yeah. Nailed it. You were perfect for that part. Yeah, and we found out that you can fit in a locker. Yeah, as <laughs> we, a we, grown we, man, we, we mm. figure that mm-hmm. out. Um, the uh, my other favorite thing was uh, uh, I I grew a love for wigs. <laughs> you do love a good wig. I do. Your love, love for wigs started earlier than that. Yeah, yeah. that's true. But there's just something about it. Like, was it a birthday party? It was yeah, at so, uh, yeah. our friend Carrie Anna's thirtieth. Oh, she yeah. had a a dance disco themed party, and he went as Barry Gibb. And danced the night away in in the same wig that he wore for Jesus. It was a blonde blonde Jesus. And not only did he dance the night away, it, but our it, wives actually left the party, and we continued yes. to stay there. Aaron and I <laughs> dancing with our wives leaving the party. Yes. So yeah, I, yeah he, he. I think I danced for like a solid five hours. Five hours. It was five, five hours, straight. and his eyes did not leave. It was at a dance studio, and his eyes did not leave the mirror. The entire time he just watched. I mean, it is himself. fun to watch yourself in a mirror. Oh yeah, I mean, I'm not. Play your dancing. But, yeah, it's you just fantastic. like white. You suit. looked good and oh you knew gosh. it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was great. Yeah. So your love of wigs. Yes. Continues. Um. Yes. Yeah. But yeah, no, you you killed your role oh, in Spelling you. Bee. So thank yeah. you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, and I think the other cool part is that you were able to finally. I mean, like I th- it was with uh, with Spam a lot. You didn't really interact with Janelle too much on stage. We didn't. We hardly interacted for this one. I know. I, I well, know. he really gave you a big hug. hug. Well, yes, and the hug was one of those things where I was like, "You should hug me," because I wanted you to hug me. Like you know, it just right. it it worked out that way. But like 
our characters did not have a single scripted line together. We had to find moments where they could kind of connect. He uh, gave me Pokemon cards or showed me his cool rock a few times. Yeah, that's, that's not code for anything. <laughs> I told no. Kristen one night, I was like, I want, I want him, when you guys went in for the hug, mm-hmm. I wanted... I wanted him to like, you know, he dip you and give you give you a big kiss. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been funny. But I, I never mentioned It would have been funny, you. but kind of ruined I think the, the storyline. It would have fit yeah. you. It wouldn't have fit me. Yeah. Yeah. So I well. was thinking maybe the last show we'd mm, do that, but well, we had other shenanigans the last show. <laughs> yes, we did. <laughs> but uh so Janelle, you you played um Olive Ostrovsky. Yeah. No, she did not play Olive Ostrovsky. She became? Janelle became Olive Ostrovsky. Which is a very sad character to become. (laughs) Yeah. She's like the saddest, I think, out out of the the lot. Uh, Yes and no. I think that there's an inherent uh, hopefulness underneath the sad... uh, life situation that she finds herself in. She's, yeah. she's definitely the heroine of the show. Yes. I think. Mm-hmm. Like the drug? Sure. Mm-hmm. No. Yes. Like oh. a hero. Oh. The female oh, okay. hero heroine. Okay. Not 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 the shooting it up okay. mm-hmm. Sorry. stuff. I think what was really unique about your role and the way that you portrayed it was that we have that the sadness but you always managed to keep up the even in like the the I love you song which is supposed to be it is supposed to be sad and mm-hmm. gut wrenching i mean you still had that naive um not carefree but um whimsical mm. uh tone still in that yeah i mean i i uh, I, you and i had spoken back and forth a little bit about mm-hmm. that song and the way you were and I, I don't know how you did it, but at one point I could pick up on like five different feelings and mm-hmm. emotions. And mm-hmm. uh, yeah, you were just able to maintain that through the majority. I don't know the whole show, but you, you were able to maintain that in some parts where you shouldn't have been able to. Yeah. Yeah. And I thought it was really cool. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I, yeah. I, I saw, because I got to watch you guys from my vantage point, and you were never out of character. Ever. Yeah. Ever, ever out of character. Mm-hmm. You, you know, every facial expression, everything you did was in character, mm-hmm. on point for what was going on at the moment. Thank you. And it was, yeah. I, I stand yeah. in awe. Yeah. I, I spent a lot of time um, with, like, I don't think it took me very long to find, like, the voice of the character per se, but. I spent a lot of time um, figuring out like what her tics would be, you know, and, and just sitting there and like trying to feel it in my posture. And like, you know, I tried the hair twirling and it felt too, it felt too nervous. And I felt like the fidget leg. And there were some moments where that worked for the character. But for the most part, I had to just like find her in the way that I held my hands and, you know, just every, I tried to get every aspect of my body to feel like the character and I think that that helped a lot. Yeah. 100%. My favorite line in the whole show was one that you added and I'll set you up for it and hopefully <laughs> it was uh, uh, Mr. Schofield once got lost in his own backyard. Oh, that's easy to do. <laughs> <laughs> Killed me every time. Thank I thought it was hilarious. <laughs> uh, it, it showed like you, it showed all of off perfectly. Mm-hmm. So. <laughs> And we, you, you talked a little bit. Well, no, you didn't talk a little bit. You gave us a glimpse. Did we air that clip? We did, her, yeah. Okay. Of you we just did. going over what the I Love You song meant to you. Yeah. But did you get any feedback? Because, I mean, you must have had feedback from people that n- had seen that originally. I mean, it's clearly a mind, it, mind-blowing. I mean, the three yeah. of you together yeah. was fantastic. Yeah, we actually got um, a little mini standing ovation on night one for it which like oh really yeah i, mean, I didn't know that did you really not know that? <laughs> no i didn't oh okay. <laughs> i thought you were joking no yeah he wasn't, he wasn't yeah out there. um and like it was hard in that moment to not be like ah oh, thank you you know like but um yeah i mean a lot of people from the original production that we did that from 
made their way out to see the show and and that was very special to me to see them in the audience being able to kind of see it come to fruition but um yeah I I think overall like Scott you were saying the I love you song is kind of an outlier in the show Hmm. a little bit it feels other it feels outside of the show and I think that that works because it's it's a dream sequence yeah right mainly it's it is fantastical um so yeah and I I think that um it it touched a lot of people um I had a lot of people tell me that it brought up memories from childhood which I was like I'm so sorry for you (laughs) you know but I think we can all in a way relate to being that kid that maybe was lonely and and wished for friends or maybe you you were a kid that didn't have super attentive parents or everybody as a child experienced longing in some way and I think that um you can you can find something to relate to there yeah no it's it's I um we we started dating when you did that song for the Mm -hmm. first time around Mm -hmm. and uh I don't know if it was just like being 10 years younger and just or 12 years younger now whatever 12, yeah. and it's just it i didn't get it i was like yeah this is a really beautiful song like mm-hmm. the really tight harmonies and like the music yeah. the the music in the background like of a song is like very uplifting and beautiful like fun and but the the lyrics are very like sad and yeah. like uh like longing and stuff so it's, it's a very like interesting complex beautiful song but then you add in like the the subtext of like you know her dad is like kind of checked out her mom's in india way checked out yeah and so you have like this song where she's just like i just want to pretend like my parents love me mm-hmm. for a little bit and it's like it's just beautiful and like i cried like mm-hmm. realizing like all these layers and all these things. It's, right. And you cried every night. I did. <laughs> <laughs> I I had to avoid. I had to freak because I had to be frozen when you guys did that song. Yeah. And I had to make sure my head was turned away mm-hmm. and I could focus on something else because right. I couldn't because I had that quick line. Right. Correct. I did hear you crack a couple there was times. A, there was a few times I did, but I yeah. had to avoid it and try to think about other mm-hmm. things because... I would have cracked every single time because yeah. it was so, yeah, you know, so powerful mm-hmm. and so emotional. Mm-hmm. It was, it was crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Aaron, to speak on that, I feel that the in Rose of Lifetime we didn't get that no context. And yes, the song was sad. We felt, but mm-hmm. with the show, Olive for the most part is a happy kid. Yeah. You, mm-hmm. In what you are happy about, you are you, you are genuinely happy. Mm-hmm. The fact that you can get excited about the spelling be such something something so small, yeah, and you could find joy in the dictionary like a, mm-hmm. a stupid thing in most people's eyes of like how could you find joy in that, <laughs> and yet you have this genuinely heart breaking, gut wrenching yeah. backstory. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it adds so much more emotion to that song. It's, yeah, it's I mean, nuts. the song itself is kind of the unraveling point for her in the yeah. show, and it yeah. happens at an unraveling point for a lot of characters. Like, yeah, you Panch had a huge yeah. meltdown right before, and Logan, one of the other spellers, kind of has like a big emotional breaking point, and then there's this underscore that's almost like the the Jaws theme song that's happening right beforehand, dun, like dun. a da dun da yep. dun, and so you just feel this like tension kind of building and then the i love you song is like the big crescendo and then like the snap back to reality and like after that song she kind of is it's it just ends with the realization that she's alone and she has to do it herself because all the rest of the show she's had the hope that her father would show up in the audience and she looks out and he's just not there man i'm starting to cry well thinking about it yeah anyways (laughs) <laughs> like one of my favorite parts is right after that um zach gets up it's his turn to spell <laughs> and like his word is uh, what is crepuscule. crepuscule he says crap what <laughs> crap, crap, and the whole audience it's amazing how quickly the audience would that line just would snap the audience back into like yeah. oh this is a comedy yeah 
Because, you know, there's not really a dry eye in the house after the I Love You song. And then that moment, it's such a a genius. They're so clever in the way that they wrote it. Because they knew exactly what the crowd would need in order to snap back into it to finish out the show. Right. It's like uh, the Hamilton, can we get back to politics, please? Exactly, yes. (laughs) Um, But could we just get back to the spelling? (laughs) Yep. Wow. You know. So we we talked about our experiences acting in a new show. Yeah. That, you know, we've been busy doing for the last few months, which is why we haven't done a podcast. Mm -hmm. Sorry about that, everybody. But our fourth member here did not act in the show. Mm. He produced it. Mm. One one of the producers. So we need to find out, John, how was producing a show? Okay. I have two answers. Uh, Would you like the truth or would you like the... We want the hard-hitting news. We want the truth. Mm -hmm. Nothing Uh, but the the truth. I want the 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 fluffy one. Do you the want the fluffy one? Yeah. Okay. Uh, honestly, producing was just one of those experiences that I'll never have again. Um, it really opened my eyes to the the world of producing and the people that produce and just the process. You know, it really it really gave me um, some insight. Yeah. On mm. what to do and what not to do. Yeah. Mm. And uh, I am forever enriched because of the experience. Enriched. Wow. wow. I like that. that. Was, I, like yeah. that. Yeah. I liked that too. That made me feel kind of fuzzy inside. So that was all truth. I However, um, I think it was a load of crap. It wasn't because oh, I can okay. I could spin all of those into the negative reaction. That <laughs> all right, spill I, the tea, I, I Juan. Did, I did not have much fun uh, producing, and I I didn't have much. I didn't take a lot from the experience. And what I mean by that is I don't uh, like it. <laughs> I, I I just want to like preface like you are a very passionate person yes. and you are very you um, you feel really well. Like you I, I feel like you you feel what people are feeling. Uh, my empathy is on point. Yeah. Um, and so being on that side of things where you have to care you have to help you gotta help you gotta be like make sure people are healthy and loved and whatever you know all these things um and i think you realize like how much it takes and how much people don't do that Mm. so you're right you are right on point yeah. Uh, my, my thoughts going into it were, um, my biggest thought, and I took this from spam law is how do I help Kristen yeah. succeed, succeed? Yeah. And then after I know that Kristen is succeeding, how can I help the cast support her in that role? Mm-hmm. I, I had a great manager when I was in high school who said we, the store wasn't doing great. And she looked at all of us and she said, it is not my job to make sure you're doing your job. It seems like that would be a manager job, but deep down, it is my job to put money in the pocket of the owners, Mm. and your job is to help me do that. That is why you're here. You are ultimately here to help me put money into the pocket of the owners, and I need to do a job to help you do your job. And that goes the same for producing, and I, I, my goal going in again was to make Kristen's life easy and to make sure that the cast had the most enjoyable experience and walking into that first, uh, and I'll just be candid because I've been candid with most people, uh, with the whole Oompa experience of being a producer, uh, there's a certain slate or stamp, I guess for a first time producer. And right there from the get go, junior was stamped right on it because it was my first show. Yep. And that was tough going into it because I felt like you have all of the responsibility and none of the, the say, the the say behind it Mm. yeah, or the respect of it. Uh, Yeah. There was, there was not, it was not an enriching position. 
It was not, usually when you're a junior, you're treated like a junior. I wanted to you be know, taught. There's a different. The, how to do it, right? I wanted yeah. to. I wanted something to. I didn't want to be responsible for. <clears throat> and not saying I wanted to just be lazy and get by. I wanted to do the work, but I shouldn't have been a leader in that role because, again, I was learning. I was. I should have been right. trained in that position. And and this doesn't go against anyone, but it took the joy and the drive away from doing those two things that I went into it for, which yeah. was to support Kristen and to make sure the cast was happy and supported. Mm-hmm. Um, just from the very beginning, I mean, I uh, when it came to casting or um, you know some big choices in the show, I I tried to give my opinion and and just thinking coming from a director standpoint because i do have director experience right and and uh and it was one of those times that oh well (laughs) i guess it doesn't mean anything to be a producer Mm -hmm. and that was really tough it was really tough to be responsible but not you know not have any of the the say behind it and and that might just be because i wanted to (laughs) It might be because I have strong leadership quality or like I think I do. I don't know. But yeah. ultimately, I didn't feel like I could do my job. Yeah. And that was really stressful for me. <clears throat> now, that being said, I mean, we had some great successes as producers, but we also had uh, a bunch of times where we fell short as a production crew. And I think that yeah. was, again, because of that whole junior. It got in the way right from the get-go. Mm. And uh, it was tough. Yeah. It was really tough. But th- at the end of it all, I feel like I can say I did whatever I could mm-hmm. to do my two jobs. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Cr- now, Kristen felt supported, and she told me that she felt supported by me, and I, I, felt, I felt great about that. And I feel like I did whatever I could to make sure that the cast mm-hmm. had as much of a experience as I could have. Super proud of the crew and the cast, and everything went great. And the money side, I guess everything went well there too. I mean, yeah. I, uh, but it was frustrating being friends and a spouse yeah, I bet. of a cast yeah. and also being a producer. Yeah. And I don't, I just don't ever want to do it again. Mm. It was, it was not a, an experience that I envy. And, uh, yeah. But what I wanted to say with this is that even though my experience was, I didn't have fun, I've talked to, maybe 10 people now that are producers that enjoy being producers Mm -hmm. and finding what they enjoy about the experience. Yeah. And there are a lot of great things to being a producer. People find it very rewarding Mm -hmm. and, and I'm envious of them, Mm -hmm. but I did not find it fun at all. It's not for everybody. Right. Yeah. I think it takes a special person. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think the four of us are performers. Um, Aaron, you're a performer, but you're also a tech guy. You you know a lot of the behind the scenes stuff. But I think we're performers, and I and that doesn't always lead well. I think to producing. Uh, I mean, I did. I decided to take 2019 to uh, to produce my uh, myself to to try it out, and I didn't have any fun with it mm. for sure. Um, I mean, we did Godspell and I produced that and I, I, I enjoyed it, but it was not, it was, it, it wasn't fun. It that was, was a rough show was, to produce. Say, you anyway. also couldn't be around a lot for that, where your, your schedule was so crazy. The, mm-hmm. the schedule was crazy. You had to fire someone. Uh, yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah. I thought maybe I was going to get into the show <laughs> at one point. Um, and it it was tough after coming off of four years of doing Mm -hmm. a bunch of shows, you know, being in the, in the, you know, the headlights, the limelight and, and then all of a sudden, you know, being part of a show, but not Mm. the glamor of it. It was, it was a different experience and and I didn't enjoy it either. Mm -hmm. Like, like John, but I think, I I think that's because we love the performance part. I, I, you know, that's my, yeah. my opinion on it. Mm. Yeah, that's, that's a good point. I think, yeah. you know, you... But Aaron, you've you've been behind the scenes more, really, than you have... I, I honestly like it better. I... 
but you, but you're so good at performing I, too. I I I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, but there's something about just like making other people look good. It's just yeah. it's so much fun. It's like making them look good and making them sound good and yep. making sure that the people that are um, having that presented to them, have, letting them have the best experience that they can. I th- I think there's mm-hmm. so much fun, just like troubleshooting all of that. Yeah. Well, that, it goes right off of my last comment about being a producer is that the joys I have. I have three little stories for each of you, Janelle. Being able to watch you with your because your father was a volunteer speller one of the nights, right? And just like to see <laughs> yeah. no, so you cute. on stage with your dad, mm-hmm. and to actually see you and Aaron and your dad yeah. dancing together was like, when is that ever yeah. going to happen again? The joy of being able to see him up there, right? Mm-hmm. And then Scott, you as Panch in the audience beforehand every night. I'm watching you from the little lobby area and. I, I said it before, but you weren't you were not Scott. I it's wasn't. like somebody took my friend away and replaced him with <coughs> that. A sleazy I mean, like that. grease ball. <laughs> that. And uh like, and then we had the the night when Camden got the nosebleed. Oh my nose gosh. Bleed. You were, and you broke out into like a stand up. Oh routine. I had to oh my we were gosh. Like, <laughs> the, everybody's downstairs dealing with Camden and the crowd's just kinda sitting there and I'm like, Well, I guess I better do something. Mm-hmm. So I just went out there and just improvised, <laughs> keeping them mm, entertained. Entertained, yeah. I guess. But it was, and it was it, it was, was in character, like it was yeah. just awkward enough. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Like, because yeah. Panch wouldn't be like, you know, I don't know. It just it no, was it was, it was perfectly awkward. in character, yeah. perfectly hilariously awkward. <laughs> so funny. Yeah. What's your moment for Aaron? So Aaron's was very specific. You did so much little additional character work yeah to being leaf that and to be able to sit back and watch all of that and to know like what what you're not to slight you know your direction or anything like that but what you were given for that character and what you were able to produce Mm -hmm. was so rewarding and to see you not that you changed it much but you just like grew in that character night after night yeah I mean, it was it, it was like I was your director. I was feeling so proud of like the, <laughs> the performance you gave. Mm-hmm. And then yeah. I think the last thing is I just wanted to say that like, I had the flu the last oh week. I know, and uh, and it was heartbreaking to not be there with you guys. And and uh, so my other producers must have stepped up to be able to fill those whatever slot I left. So I I thought that was you know I owe it to them a little bit to whatever you know space they filled that i left but it was really i it was heartbreaking that i couldn't be there yeah but yeah but Mm -hmm. then there was something we missed you in the program we missed you but uh janelle did a fair Uh, job of stepping in for she (laughs) she did so yeah john's well it started during godspell we embraced like a 90s theme i don't know why it's still going and uh we did the the mighty ducks circle hype up thing and it's now gone through three shows and i hope it keeps going mm. yeah for jekyll yeah. and hyde well yeah. speaking of that <laughs> yeah that yeah. was announced yeah uh pretty cool so what it is i think it's safe to say we're gonna keep it going yeah. tell through. tell the what people yeah, what what, is, what, is what this? this is well uh we have a pretty busy season for us it was announced that we have Very a pretty busy. busy season coming up next year for oompa and uh and the, the final show of the season is the musical Jekyll and Hyde. And Rachel, my wife and I, Rachel, are directing it together. She's going to music direct. I'm going to, woot, woot. but we're kind of co-directing it. And we're super, super excited. Yeah, it's, that's great. I'm, I'm so stoked for people to see our vision of it. We already have a very strong vision. We've already kind of gotten to work on like learning tracks and everything. We're just mm-hmm. really, very excited to, to that's knock great. it out of the park. That's great. And uh, I don't know. I'm just, it was different with Godspell. Yeah. Right? Because I kind of feel that everyone going to Godspell had maybe a little bit of hesitation walking into that. Yeah. It's a religious, it has religious factors. It's 
Uh, for Oompa people, they're looking in. These are two new directors. For mm-hmm. uh, you walk into the set and it's you know an alleyway. Mm-hmm. There's just so many different. You walk into that feeling, a certain feeling. No one is going to know what to do with Jekyll and Hyde. I feel it's the show is not like the story that we're used to. Mm-hmm. Uh, the feelings are not what we're going to be used to. And then our vision for the show is just mm-hmm. really, really campy and cool. Yeah, and It's a very different show than the last three seasons of musicals that Oompa has seen too. Because yeah. Godspell, even though it was very tightly scripted and choreographed, like it, it's kind of a loosey-goosey feeling kind of show. Spamalot had a lot of elements of improv and then Spelling Bee obviously was like very oh, improvisational yeah. and you know whereas this is like you know it's like a legit musical <laughs> you know. unlike no I, mean, yeah, I know you I know when you i mean, say but. legit i don't mean legitimate i mean like a legit like you know it's it's very serious and it, it's well, just there, a different kind of feeling there are large ensemble numbers yeah. big feelings um and a very diverse casting mm-hmm. the the one thing we w- wanted to look for for a show was how do we get all age groups? Yeah. And how do we get the 70 year olds that are great on stage that have been kind of not um, represented well excluded, but yeah, yeah, the last couple of shows have not given really a chance for that age group or those performers. And yeah. I'm just, I'm very excited for that to, to not change, but just to happen. And uh, yeah, as old as people of Scott's age, I mean, we have roles for them. 30? So, yeah. If you're 30, right. if you you're can 30, audition right. for Jekyll and Hyde. The mustache added 25 <laughs> years. <laughs> but yeah, no, very exciting. And also it was announced that there's another show going on that... There's a couple of shows. Oh, Aaron yeah. is going to Yeah, but produce. Aaron is involved in one I of them. Aaron yeah. is producing that show. I, I am. I'm, we're, we're, we're produ- I'm producing uh, Misery. And I'm going to jump King. into Aaron's role and try to do some tech. Oh, really? What are you gonna do? I'm gonna do the tech. Hopefully, all of the tech. I will, well, wow! You know, look at I you. volunteered. I figured that's the best place to learn is from Aaron and from Norm. Mm-hmm. That's so, true. They are the gurus of the tech. They're the guys that know it. So mm-hmm. you know, let's oh. spread that knowledge. Cool. Yeah. And, no. It's and hearing your story of producing is like, oh, what did I get myself into? Okay, here's the thing but. about producing. I think that you are made to be a producer. I agree. Because yeah, yeah. you share a similar drive to me, which I love producing, in that your primary directive is to see a show succeed. That's what you want. Yeah. And if that's yeah. your primary directive, then you're going to be golden. And you, yes. you, were, like, you were producing in Spelling Bee. You were producing. You were helping tech. You were mm-hmm. you were acting. You were you were helping. You were helping out in different roles. You you freaking swept the stage again as usual. Yeah, and, and you did and some of that was, during spam a lot too. Yeah. Like you're yeah. already golden. Yeah, it's yeah. just going to be like the mailings and the stupid tedious things that you might struggle with, but for sure you're going to kill it. You'll be fine. No, I'm 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 excited. You have that supporting role attitude. It's it's so funny. Not not to put you down at all, but <laughs> no, you're not a leading man. You're just <laughs> no, 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 no. You are absolutely. You're both. <laughs> no, it's so, you're it's, both. It's but so you, funny when you are so supportive. When when I'm back, like when I'm like running lights or sound or whatever, and I'm looking up at, at the like the people who are performing. I'm like, man, they look like they're having so much fun. And, like they're. S- 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 Maybe I should do that. And now yeah. you know that it's not fun. And I'm then, and then I'm up on stage looking at like Kristen, and I'm just like, they're they're in Spamala. I was just like, man, she's got like the proudest look on her face. I kind of wish I was her. Were you thinking that during Spelling Bee too? Because that was a whole well, extra she, level of stress. <laughs> well, she, she, she was up there with us. Well, so right, I, I couldn't look at her. Yeah, that's what I was saying. But yeah, yeah, it was just like, you know, I was looking at like Jeremy running lights. I was like, man, he looks like he's having a blast back there. I'm kind of Shout like, out to Jeremy, friend of the podcast. Yeah. Yeah. And awesome tech guru. Yeah. No, he's, he was fantastic. Um, I, I threw a lot at him. I felt bad because I was just like, I want this show to be really great. So I want, I'm going to bring like a giant soundboard that he has no idea how to use. Here, run this. And 
what's the what's the, i'd like change the lights on him like three times i was like well I, he didn't sign up to run sound either so no. the fact that we ended up in sound cues having microphones and sound cues and all this stuff like he just wanted to do lights yeah so no he, he was the champ for sure i also think too he uh what was hilarious is that the first time we had a rehearsal with lighting and sound and all that he uh he wanted me to be back there to help mm-hmm. him yeah. with the mute button and a couple of things he just didn't know. And uh, I, I don't know what I did, but I found myself doing something else producer-wise. And I walk up to him at the end. I was like, yeah, so did you make it okay? He's like, oh, yeah, that was easy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I got it. It's cool. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Well, no. he'd been, he's been doing that since high school, he said. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. But he, I feel like as a like tech guy, he went above and beyond. He was at so many rehearsals. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, yeah, he was with us, you know. Well, I'm very well, excited to give him a uh, a rather upsized role for for Jekyll and Hyde. Oh, he's going to be playing Jekyll and Hyde. Yeah, cool. Yeah, he, and he in fact plays all the male roles oh, cool. on stage <laughs> and the female roles too, right? Some of them. One of them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. No, Jeremy, but he, he did a great luck. job. I'm super excited to for have him do more shows with us. So. Yeah, and we also have a, a clue coming up. Clue. Um, uh, yeah. This uh, this spring, the play, not the musical. Yeah, um, which Clue on stage. There, is there a musical of Clue? There is. Yeah. Which is just yes. Clue. Yeah, which don't is just Clue. No, the musical is Clue the musical, and then the play is Clue on stage. Yeah, but they don't ever put the musical yeah, they do. behind the logo yes, when it Clue. Do. Yes, they do. They don't. They do. Clue on stage is for the play, and Clue is just for the musical. Clue. Because what the board game and the movie are both. This clues. is the ASMR segment of the oh, show. Okay. Scott, you should clink your ice in your you glass. You slowly clink the ice in your glass. Thank you, Scott. You are going to help me out in a uh, passion project next year yes. too. Yes, I'm pretty excited about that. So for the last couple of years, I really wanted to do some type of like Halloween scary play in the park, where you know just where and I had envisioned. The idea of like, um, <laughs> I first pictured it as a flash mob Halloween play where you have a bunch of people in like a park and all of a sudden like a play just starts happening. That's right. I vision for it at first. Obviously, that's hard to do. Hard yeah, to it, plan an audience. It, yeah, it's hard to get people to a square without. Yeah. Hey, go stand in the cold. Yeah, just go stand randomly. There. Just <laughs> see what happens. So it kind of <laughs> turned into something different. But ultimately, I have kind of wrote this Halloween play with... Um, stories that are public domain right they're they're free they're urban legend they and uh using some local tales and some big urban legend and and yeah it's gonna be a small silent cast is bigfoot involved it's not Mm. no wow well he's real so Mm -hmm. well he's still an urban legend like but he's real well yeah but I'm just saying, like it's still considered an urban legend. I mean, All right, fine. I'm an ur- add, urban legend. I'll add I'm Bigfoot to it last minute. Yeah, sure. We're adding Bigfoot, Scott. Oh, sweet. thank you. All right, I'm down with that. So, what is it? Is is it like a narrator is kind of, and then the people are silently acting it out? Exactly. Right. Cool. Yeah. And uh, he's gonna or she, the narrator, will share the, some three stories. We're gonna have, ironically, it started out with Jekyll and Hyde. Mm-hmm. Uh, then it goes to well, it starts out with Telltale Heart. Which is a great. I love that story mm-hmm. so much. Yeah, and uh, it moves into Jekyll and Hyde, and then Mr. Jekyll and Doctor Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Excuse me, and then finally is the story. It's a main urban legend of the lighthouse keeper and his wife, mm-hmm. which is a cool story. Essentially, he uh, buys his wife a piano, and the f- it comes with one song. And they're spo- they he ordered more songs for her, but it was a very very stormy season. And the songs weren't able to be shipped to the lighthouse because it was on a rock, you know, kind of a little island off mm-hmm. the coast of Maine. And she played the song over and over and over again, and it drove him crazy, and he killed her. Yeah. And now very lighthouse sweet. keepers still hear the song mm. played in the lighthouse. Wow. So it's it's gonna be fun. Um, she's gonna have a couple outdoor. Events, hopefully, maybe a couple no, not uh, song. at 290, and 290 is sponsoring it. So, we are doing kind of like a split fundraiser. Uh, half of the funds are going to our scholarship for our friend Jasper Haraki that passed mm-hmm. away. Mm-hmm. Um, 
and half of it is going to underwriting the pit for Jekyll and Hyde. Perfect. So, right. and 290 sponsoring the whole thing. So, thank you, Ryan. Wait, yeah. We, yeah. Ryan, friend of the couple, podcast. Ryan Richie, yes. And we hope to do a couple of shows possibly at uh, McLaughlin Garden as well. Yeah. So, it's going to be hopefully two Just outdoor events are... and uh, at a garden and then two at 290. Um, so we'll see as great, it goes. Yeah. Great space over there in the barn or in the garden yeah. itself. So uh, that so we'll, really we'll lead see. to it. But either way, we're gonna have a lot of fun with that. Yeah, I, th- and, uh, I think the Halloween theme thing has yeah, been something cool. that has not been tapped into around it's here, true. and I think it's, it's cool. something we need to do. And mm-hmm. I, I'm excited to be a part of it. Yeah, I'm, no, I'm, I'm stoked that you were yeah. so quick to jump on it with me. So I wonder uh, if you guys could do it. Because uh, they do like the trick or treat Main Street uh, uh, on like the Friday before. Oh yeah. Oh, we be... could have something involved with that. That's not a bad idea. Mm-hmm. Maybe something even... to help advertise it. Even if Oompa just had a table and yeah. gave out some yeah candy and brochures and right. said, right. "Hey, this hey, is a thing." You're gonna that's come happening? see us tonight, mm-hmm. possibly later tonight or Ideas. tomorrow. It will be Ooh, an like interesting it. challenge. Because if you've done your math, you'll realize that we're doing that passion project while, while doing a full-on musical. Yep. Yep. But uh, I have some plans in works, and uh, yeah, hopefully uh, can pull it off without a hitch. So I, I'm super excited, and everyone that I've mentioned it to has been super excited about it. Yep. So mm-hmm. uh, I feel like you know, not only is it a gift to the community to be able to do something during Halloween, but... Hopefully we can raise some money for Jasper Scholarship as well. Yeah. Nice. We've been able yeah. to do some really cool stuff with that, yeah. and it's a awesome way to honor his memory. So, mm-hmm. cool. Yeah. Great. Oh yeah, Music. we are back to the Backstairs Podcast for our last segment of the episode, wah, wah, episode wah, wah. one, season two. It's so good to what? hear that. Season oh two man, part. season two. <laughs> Um, so I got a question, um, John, mm. uh, your wife, yeah. um, was in the show. <laughs> Holy crap. Was she? I know. Yeah. I, uh, can, can we, can we just like go back to like how it happened? Just get, Cause it's a funny story of like, it is just it's like a blast. being there in the right time. And I don't, thing. I feel like it's her story to tell. However, mm-hmm. my piece of it is essentially, you know, she was just hanging out at auditions, right? Right. And there was just one part of the night where I happened to look at Kristen just as she looked at me and we were both like, dang, she can do this. <laughs> and we went home and it there was just some excitement about the show. And again, it's her story to tell. So yeah. it's too good for me to... But ultimately, she went from being someone who's never been on stage. She, she, she prefers the the background... Clarinet. Being, exactly. She likes to be in the pit. And uh she's she's great in the pit. I mean, she's done like an insane amount of shows. Yeah. Playing right. clarinet. And of course music directed when we did uh Godspell and arguably I think is probably one of the best music director, not to slight anyone else, but um she did a great job her she first did. time music directing. Yeah. And she's gonna kill it with Jekyll and Hyde, so I'm so yeah. excited for her. But yeah, she not only was on stage acting but she sang and i know her right I, she has been singing gavin de Gras since we first got together <laughs> <laughs> and when she sings a gavin de Gras song it sounds like gavin de Gras. Mm-hmm. she has an amazing ear even though she doesn't use her for her instrument yeah. that she can emulate that voice tone where she's a little bit lower of a tone and uh timbre but yeah she killed that role mm-hmm. that role traditionally she- is done by a guy yeah, and so it's in that range, and she freaking killed it. Mm-hmm. She did. I was so proud of her. Yeah. Uh, the the Nailed crying it. that you had for Aaron. Oh my gosh! When I bet, yeah. yeah. Kristen sent me a because I wasn't able to be at rehearsal the first night she did her song on stage, and Kristen sent me a video, and I'm just laying in bed, just just mm-hmm. sobbing of how good it was, and <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, she man, it was it was so it's so it was so cool. It was like just seeing the 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 evolution of her yeah. like yeah. just like being at practice and just like uh, and then like this the confidence that she started just to grow as we were like yeah. 
you know, gutting on stage as we're doing like dress rehearsals. And then like the final performance is mm-hmm. just like, you know, this is like her bag. She's got right. this and it's great. Well, it was also fun watching the mindset evolution. Cause at first she was like, I don't really get like why you guys like doing <laughs> yeah. this. And then it was, there were a couple moments after the first time that we choreographed a song where she was like, oh, that was really fun. <laughs> and then after the first like full run through on stage, she's like, I get it now. Like it was just, it was really fun watching the evolution of her joy yeah. throughout the show. Yeah. We're going to have to get her on. Yeah. And, have her just like, and she know. is such a good singer. Like, for someone who never, like she's said so many times, I'm not a singer. She is so a singer. Like she took us yeah. to church every night. And so. she has some amazing stories to tell yeah. from this show too, from being able to talk and sing to her brother one night was yeah. great. Um, the fact that the character of Mitch kind of sits in one place for the majority of the show. So she added her word search book, which became another character. You know, she <laughs> added the candy and the bubble gum and like that added a whole other part to her and yeah. Oh my gosh. The, I, she just got so many yeah. reactions from mm-hmm. her we, little things. We definitely have to have her on the show because yeah. I think, I think she might have had a thing for Doug Panch. Oh. We'll I, have to I, ask I, her. I don't think that's true. Oh. I'm, well, well, I'm just saying, you know, it, uh, we don't know for first, sure. Yeah. We'll yeah. hear it We first. don't know for sure. I think we need to find <laughs> out. We need to go to the source. Mm-hmm. Well, let's mine that if a little that's bit. that's true. Here. <laughs> I need to. Re- Are you getting a little jealous? You Chuck? need to reevaluate. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but that's just a teaser for Rachel. She's gonna be on the show at our other podcast at some point, and she's got so many stories to tell. I can't wait for her to be able to show off. So, speaking of Rachel being on the show, yeah, at some point, I think we're gonna have a lot of great more great people on the show. Well, yeah, coming season up, two. season two, we're just starting here. We're going to have more great guests. Season yeah. one was fr- a lot of friends. Mm-hmm. A lot of friends. We had a lot yes. of friends. Yep. And I feel like that might have been a little easy because sometimes it's... Which was kind of on purpose. Yeah. But but like layups for the most part. Yeah. Right? Like I mean, softball, you know? Yeah. Not, not saying anything bad about softball. No. Like it's, it's, it's and still And not that tough. we're not friends with who we're planning on having in season two. But right. But we're going to get out of our comfort zone, maybe. But I find uh, that we're going to have several redeeming qualities oh. in season two redemption redemption it's all about redemption that in maybe season those two. parts that what you're where we're that were a little easy for season one we're going to show our true colors and, oh, and find yeah. out exactly we're not, we're not going to take how good we are at this two. we're not very good no we're not well we're, not we're going to have <laughs> redeeming <laughs> moments <laughs> maybe not shows but moments yeah moments of Redemption. Mm-hmm. I think it's Moments that time of redemption. Of an episode. I think that's a song. Moments, Moments of, of redemption. It's a good band name. It is, mm. it's not bad, right? yeah. Maybe the BSP band can be called Moments of Redemption. It's true. It's or question- your first album. That's questionable. Yeah, it is a little questionable. Well. Speaking also, of questionable, we have a questionable gent. Oh, we ha- we have questions. He's questioning because you know we end the show with strike, right? Unless you guys have a better mm-hmm. idea, um, leave a comment saying uh, yeah, a better idea than what <laughs> do, we do something no. different for crying out loud. Get rid of that questionable guy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we're going with the sh- questions until you tell us different. And Aaron, what was the f- your favorite part oh. of Spell and Bee? My favorite, it's not Spam a lot anymore. It's Spell and Bee. <laughs> my, my favorite part of uh, Spell and Bee, um, I was... This, this has a little bit of backstory. Um, we a couple of episodes ago we talked about um, auditions and stuff like that, like we said before. And you said no, and I said that I was on the fence, and um, whether I was going to audition or not. Right. And me and Janelle were talking about it, um, and the the main reason why I di- I auditioned for the show was because I love the community aspect of doing a show where it's just like you get to hang out with your friends guaranteed three nights a week. Yeah. Mm. And it's like, honestly, like my dream was like, if I could just hang out with people 24 seven, Janelle would go crazy. 
Um, <laughs> um, but I would love it. And um, so it's just like, I, I, I just, I love, you know, the, the camaraderie, the, the, we are all working towards one goal and we love just to hang out and watch Christmas movies after the show or, you know, just like go to Applebee's after a, a practice and hang so out. So many times. And it's, yep. it's just, I, 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 that's my favorite part of any show that I've done. Mm. Nice. Aaron's favorite moment. Redacted. <laughs> <laughs> so great uh, answer there, Aaron. Do, do we need to know what your favorite part of the show was, John? I had a favorite part. Did you? You had I a favorite part? I think we should part? just okay. go around the room. Oh, no. What we'll was your favorite part? My favorite part, John, you mentioned it a little earlier, was that I got to be on stage with my dad. Yeah. He was, um, was awesome. he was one of four audience volunteers on opening night. And I had texted him like the week or two before. And I was like, hey, we're looking for audience volunteers. Would you be willing to come up on stage? And he's always kind of joked that he was going to audition for a show with me. We've always kind of wanted to do it, but you know, his schedule just doesn't allow it. And I don't know if he would even want to do like a full show, but it kind of felt like such a special thing to be up there with my dad. And um, he was such a menace on the stage. He was like, poking me and he kept pulling my hair and like whispering things in my ear and just like trying to get me to break character and it was so hard because it was opening night and we had all the nervous energy anyway and then he's behind me like tugging on my hair and stuff all out of good fun of course and then you know the other three audience volunteers through a series of unfortunate (laughs) circumstances, either self eliminated because they didn't want to be up there anymore, or they just like did not comply and ended up being eliminated way before they were supposed to be seriously though. And you know, it's, it's nothing, you know who you are. That's the nature of improv. Right. But you know, he, capital S U C K. He, rallied and he you know was he had good grace about it and he was a good sport and he ended up having like a little solo dance moment on the stage (laughs) and he spelled several words right and i was just so proud yeah. That yeah. I got to share that with my dad. Scott, so. Didn't that's great. he even spell a word that you had <laughs> you'd thrown at him to get wrong, right? Like that was the right. And he nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> well so. technically. Kind technically. of kind of sort nailed of it. kind of nailed yeah, it. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was in command of the words, so mm-hmm. you know, you spelled it correctly when I said you spelled mm-hmm. it correctly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he so, le- he leaned in and whispered in my ear. I definitely didn't spell that right. <laughs> I was like, I know, <laughs> but he stayed anyway. So <laughs> yeah. kind of needed him to stay. Yeah, otherwise we would have missed half the show. The only one left. <laughs> yeah, so he kind of saved it by being a good sport, and yeah. for that I am very thankful. That's awesome. Yeah, that's fun. No, that's that's special. That's something you never forget. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Johnny boy. Yes. My favorite part was a very unorthodox part of the show. Um, But Camden, who played Mm. our... uh, Chip Tolatino. Yeah. He had a part in his solo where he walks through the audience singing with a box of candy from the PTAs, having Mm -hmm. him sell candy and snacks. And uh, he, the first couple of (laughs) shows... He was full on chucking candy at people. <laughs> and I watched him take a box of like a like a movie theater box of uh oh my gosh, a terrible Raisinets. candy. No, it wasn't raisinets. No. Yeah. It was the blue boxes. Um the goobers. Goobers. <laughs> which who wants a Nobody. box of goobers? Snow, right? snow caps. I love snow caps. Don't diss no, snow I, cap. I, I like goobers. But it's the raisinets. One I don't of those like. Boxes of goobers and hit if, if somebody that is a Oompa veteran <laughs> right in the chest. I mean, full on smack. 
<laughs> and, and the reaction, of course, I can't see her face because I was in the tech room. It was her? Oh, no. Her reaction, you could see the whole body of like, ooh. Uh. <laughs> and he just went on to do the rest of the... So Kristen, the director of the next night, was like, hey, so maybe not uh, throw Chuck candy mm. at people. Oh, my gosh. And uh, yeah, no, that was that was a great moment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, he was just so into the character, I guess, that he, yeah, but, I mean, took it right to the chest. Yeah, those so. boxes, they, they hit hurt. you right. Oh, yeah. That can hurt. Yeah. So that was probably my favorite. Yeah, I'm sure that was. Unorthodox <laughs> moment of the show, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, of course, it was a blast to watch all of you do I didn't, thing. I didn't get to see any of that. That's I've the only time I'm off stage. how special that was, so, yeah. yeah. Did you did you already say your favorite? You didn't say your favorite. He did. Okay, what's your favorite, Scott? My favorite moment in the show was unscripted. Mm. Yes. Uh, <laughs> pause for dramatic effect. <laughs> you had so many moments in the show that were unscripted. My favorite that- moment of the show was when I finally lost it and and couldn't keep control in Marcy Parks song uh, i speak I six speak, languages st- i speak six languages she paints a beautiful picture and in the final final run they pull up, <laughs> she paints a picture of doug panch <laughs> <laughs> i just loved Which, that you and Kristen both tried to <laughs> prank each other in that moment exactly that was that was the thing cuz i was prepared for them to pull out the Pinocchio picture of Kristen. I thought that's what was happening. You know, I was just ready to go. Nope. And, and so <laughs> when the, the pants picture came the out. The table re- yeah. was reserved. Oh, reversed. man. Well, that was and to just, give a little bit of background perfect. to it, the, you talk about the Pinocchio photo. That's been yes. several different shows now with Upa that it's it's poked fun at a picture, a childhood picture of yeah, Kristen in, in, in costume. Mm. So yeah. it's come up several times. Yeah, and then of course, typically it's on a piece of canvas that Carriana paints. But Kristen had the night before done a very decent um, black and white drawing, drawing yeah. slash painting of of Douglas Panch, which was really yeah. it was really really good. Yeah. yeah, I mean you knew who it was as soon as it turned yeah. around. Well, yeah. the so. issue was that I was the one that was responsible. You <laughs> both had come to me separately saying, I want to prank this person. And here's what I want you to do. Because I was the one that had to carry the canvas. And so in that moment, I knew that you were expecting me to grab a picture frame and she was expecting me to grab a canvas. So I like grabbed both and I had to decide. I felt like I was, I felt like I was in like, in a child in the middle of like divorce proceedings <laughs> with my parents. And I was like, do I want to live with dad as, or live with mom? I don't know. Olive. So <laughs> e- e- you go even deeper there yeah, being olive. For real. So like the, I, I think I chose correctly in yes, surprising you, you, you but may, like, well, what's funny is that at the pod, at the uh, cast party, of course I wasn't there the last performance. I didn't mm-hmm. want to, uh, I was just come off a week of the flu and I congratulated you on choosing correctly. Do you remember what you told me? No. Because I didn't know what you had done after the fact with the with the bows or the oh, before the yeah. bows. <laughs> so you picked Kristen's side with Scott's photo, but then... Yeah, so Rachel is supposed to take the trophy from Zach, who <laughs> won the spelling bee and... Spoiler the, alert. Spoiler. Sorry. Uh, we, pass, <laughs> we pass the trophy along. You can cut that out. Let's... Okay, Rachel takes the trophy Why from... Is that a spoiler? It already happened. Rachel takes yeah. the trophy from the winner, and we pass the trophy down the line of all the cast, and I was like, no, no, Rachel, <laughs> you put that down, <laughs> and I had her pass down the Pinocchio picture instead, and it landed with Kristen. And it was perfect. <laughs> it was, that was perfect, because yeah. that's what I wanted afterwards. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so I congratulated you with picking the right side, and then I learned that you were a double agent the whole time. He was a double agent, <laughs> and I yeah. I loved it because it worked out perfectly. Mm-hmm. Um, I I do got to say because I couldn't stop laughing, <laughs> and I and I'm trying to continue after that was going on with a straight face, trying to continue my panchness. Oh my gosh! And and that was the only night that I made sure to freeze. And watch you guys do I love you. Mm. 
so I could get out of the laughter. Oh, that's a good call. It's a very good call. <laughs> I had to stop laughing, so I figured I'm going to watch mm-hmm. the I Love You song so I could get out of the laughter. There, there were so many moments, not to drag on this question even longer, um, but there were so many moments that you had between you and Kristen because you were <laughs> oh in love with Kristen. Oh my lord. But like just you in general, but like you were reaching over and plucking her hair and just like sticking it in your pocket. Random. The straw in the, in the flask, <laughs> the <laughs> juice box straw in the flask got me. And then your argument with your hand when you like go to put your arm around her and then you're like, no, 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 don't do it. Like I, it killed me. <laughs> there, it, it, I didn't break character very often but when i did it was because you, you what, were doing something so what sick. got me is the uh, the poster right behind you with your face on it the mock-up i did for jekyll and, the Hyde. Jekyll and Hyde poster <laughs> there were several times where you had a reaction like that and the poster is making the same oh man all right yeah. you have a second question there for us questionable one well i guess we we asked what we loved the most i mean what was the most painful part of mm. well aaron well, for me, um, the first Saturday performance um, during one song, the the second song of the show, I do this thing where um, the song's called Pandemonium and we're just like being kids, being very, you know, unruly. Pandemonious. Um, so I, at the end of the song, I jump off the stage and I run across the stage, or uh, the front of the stage on the ground, and then I jump and slide onto the stage. The night before, I I did it, and I tickled your feet with my feet, Scott. <laughs> yep, I remember. And I was thinking, that was a lot of fun. I'm going to try to do that a little <laughs> bit more, just a little bit more. And so I, I run, and I'm going a little bit faster just so I can make it to you. And I jump just a hair later than I normally did and I, I jumped and I and I jumped like this but I jumped and I my knee nailed the stairs to get onto the stage with the corner of the right stage, on the right? corner of the the stairs and knocked the stairs over like five inches and they were they're not light stairs no, no. and I, like, I get up and I'm like I think I'm all right. And I take one step and I was just like, dang it. <laughs> and I'm like limping. <laughs> bleeding through your pants. Bleeding through my pants. It was, my knee still hurts. Like mm-hmm. to this day, if like it's cold out, like it's like, oh, my knee still, <laughs> still yeah. hurts. It was terrible. And then I, and then I'm like, I have a whole show ahead of me. Literally like a whole. So like yeah. the next like moment where I had to get up, I like, look behind the stage and I look at Mary Ellen who's uh, stage managing and I'm just like I need Advil now <laughs> and she's like I don't know why but I'm okay I was like it's just a Advil it was it was so painful and then I'm like every time I'm on stage I'm like all right I don't have a limp I have a limp but I don't have a limp mm-hmm. and I'm just like pretending that it, it doesn't hurt well that was that was a rough show mm-hmm. for me, mm-hmm. but you made it through with I'll, some minor did. alterations. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, it was a lot. A lot of people like said that it was like a it was a great performance, and I was mm-hmm. just like, <laughs> it wasn't by me. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I later on in the show, I go back down the stairs to help audience members who get eliminated. And um, I like sing to them in the audience. And I, before that, I'm like, I can't walk down these stairs. Yeah. So I'm like, hey, Janelle, Janelle, shh, shh, Janelle, can you, can you do it for me? <laughs> so your wife picked up the slack is yes. what you're saying. Yes. Yeah. Nice. Very good. Yeah. Very good. So. What was the most painful for you, Janelle? Oh, man. Uh, was it that first Saturday or Friday, one uh, one night the first week, um, show started out fine, and it, we were just having freak weather, 
you know, for November. And it was like a 70 oh, right. degree day. Saturday, and I think. Yeah. so it got so hot that mm. we were all we, melting, melting on yeah. the stage. And that never happens at the Grange. Usually we're freezing, <laughs> Not in November. you know, and, um, you know, it got to the point where one girl was like seeing stars um, when she had to do her dance and then, um, you know, I downed an entire bottle of water after the, I love you song. And I still felt like I had nothing left. And then I started having chest pains and feeling faint. <laughs> oh and I gosh. was like, I'm not going to make it to the end of the show. Like I'm going, this is where I die. Like that's <laughs> literally how terrible it felt. And the whole audience, they stopped laughing after a certain point, not because they weren't loving the show, but because they were like, they were, <gasps> yeah, they were so <gasps> hot. It was in, so insanely hot. It was. Show, and it was in the middle of yeah. November. Yeah. And Zach is, crazy. Zach is physically melting. Like he, yeah, he's he, just he, droplets. And like I, anybody who made it, you know, Camden might not have been melting, but pretty much everybody else out there was yeah. felt like we were going to yeah. die. I'm so, sitting there. Yeah. I Just did sitting. not sweat whatsoever for, for this show, except for that show. It was exhausting and horrible and after the show ended i just like i collapsed like i had nothing left to give yeah. it was it was terrible so i don't often feel that way yeah yeah that i think was, that was that sunday's was performance first no, no it was it was, it was a night it was saturday, I think it was saturday night. night i think it was the same night that you cracked your knee yeah. oh wow yeah yeah was it was just night. a bad night it was, it <laughs> was a bad, <laughs> bad night <laughs> oh. um, and it was crazy and the yeah. only so my painful memory is the exact same thing but from the producer perspective, mm-hmm. perspective of it, I uh, I was in the tech room, and I could see people waving their programs. Didn't really think yeah. much of it. I just that's a thing that happens in that. Didn't think anything mm-hmm. of it. And at the end of the show, I go to open the doors every night, and the wave of heat that hit me. I mean, it was. I, I can't even explain it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, you could feel the humidity. You could feel it, the. It just it, was, it hit me like a wave. And people coming out, I mean, they were drenched, the audience members. Yeah. And I remember going downstairs and saw, you know, Rachel's hall and and I said, you know, where's Janelle? And Aaron said, she's in the kitchen. So I came around the corner and you're on the floor. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And your your face is just bleach white. Oh, yeah. I mean, you you could just, you it looked like you were in physical pain and mm-hmm. it just, it just hurt so much to be like. That, that just happened. but it was so f- it was such a freak thing it I mean, really was and guess what the next day Fine. it was 40 degrees out but, it was yeah. november we had a snow squall i mean it was yeah, it was the weirdest right. thing um but yeah that's, that was yeah, as a producer perspective that was really really tough to know yeah. that, it was like, crazy yeah. you all had to go through that and yeah. um yeah, yeah that's pretty stressful and also thinking too of like um you know a couple of people had gone home because of how upset they were and just mm-hmm. How do I fix this? How do I solve this? And, yeah. mm-hmm. and thankfully, everyone was, you know, really good the next day and was able to just kind of put on a brave face. But yeah. that was tough. Yeah, and you yeah. guys killed it. So, yeah. yeah, I I can't say I had a real painful part of the show other than being patch. <laughs> 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 it was it was joyful and like painful at the same time. Mm-hmm. I guess I don't yeah. know. It was. You know, I I enjoyed. You know, I love doing this and b- being a part of this group and yeah. being a part of this community. But it was painful being pan. Looking to have, have look in the mirror this. every day. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Having to God, that stinking mustache drove me nuts. You look great. It, you it, look. It, it, <laughs> And but it was it I was I don't know this is a compliment but I think you lost like ten pounds in shaving and cutting your hair yeah <laughs> I hope so your face got yeah. slimmer I mean Doug yeah. Dougie as we fondly call him in my house D- Dougie Dougie oh I, had mm. heard that. I didn't know it was Dougie you know oh Doug uh-huh. good yeah yeah so is that that's what the wife is saying when you went in her sleep at night panchy panch oh mm. panchy panch <laughs> you're, you're still on our fridge so yeah. I'm on my fridge too. So. I just I just realized that uh, there's a that hangover song about Doug. Doug, Doug. Oh, That's all we Doug. can sing because the rest is redacted. Dougie, no. Doug, Doug. 
And if he's been murdered by Crystal... Redacted. Redacted. Then we're redacted. So, uh, we got some more questions. Scott, do you have a questionable what? question I, for I, us? I don't know if I got a question. Do we have a question? Yeah, something Can about that question. season two. I mean, season two. Yeah, season two. What are we going to do with season two? Mm. What do you want to do with season two, Aaron? Oh, Rhyme. man. I, I have a lot of hopes for season two. Um as as we talked about, like we have we have some video. Hopefully, this gets better. Um, I, I I have some I have some high hopes that uh, that uh, that we we do our show the next level. Mm-hmm. You know, we're 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 nice. progressing in the our seasons, but I want to progress how we do our show, make it more streamlined, make it more entertaining for everybody else. I'm uh I'm excited for season two. We'll see what we can do. Yeah. Nice. Um. So on that note, if you uh if you want to help support our endeavors, uh, um, you can s- mail out checks to um. Uh, I, I, we could start, do not give out our address. We, I mean, we could we could start like a a bank account. Like we so, if you want start a post office box. Yeah. yeah. So if you want to send us money, um, if that's something you want to do. Let us know, and we'll set it up for you to do that. Could probably make a Venmo. Yeah, if you guys want to Venmo us money, um, <laughs> we're gonna set that up. And we'll, we'll set tell that you up. How to do that, and that would, that would be uh, just to help us, you know, get some cameras, some lighting. Maybe we'll go to a table. I don't know. Well, give us give if you have any ideas for us. Let us mm. know. I want to green one of these things. We can I make think that we have right one of those. Never mind. I don't need any of your money. Yeah. Wow. And those are. Well, like, I guess we're good. They're too. like ten cents a piece. So if you want to make a donation to the podcast, uh, they're uh, ten cents a piece. We can get different <laughs> foam covers for our microphones. Yeah, I miss if my If I pink had one. ten cents for everybody that needed support. one of these things, yeah, yeah everybody who's things. listened gave us ten cents. <laughs> we'd have a whole dollar. <laughs> I think we'd probably have like ten bucks. Wow. So, Janelle, what do you want to see from season oh, two? Oh man, um, more of you guys. Um, uh, I'm excited to see the podcast kind of make its way through the winter months. I feel like you guys had a pretty short go of it the first time around and like to maybe take it through the year, I think is going to yep. yield some interesting fruit. Um, I'm excited for maybe some new fun, fresh segments, um, new ways to connect with the audience that maybe we hadn't been yeah yeah cool johnny boy uh when what man what is there to not be excited about this could be a joke but it's no time for a joke this is a serious matter this is not a laughing matter aaron i I wasn't laughing oh okay (laughs) i'm just used to people laughing at me i'm sorry (laughs) all right now i'm laughing yeah uh I'm excited for season three. Mm. Wow. Yeah. Well, you're and just skipping right over season two. Yeah, season two is going to suck, but season three. <laughs> season three, three we're going to nail it. So season one, <laughs> I fell not in love with my radio voice, if you would, but I'm okay with my voice now, mm. right? I I can listen to my own voice and be like, I want to listen to more of that guy. You're okay, okay? with that. First couple episodes. We're terrible. I'm like, oh man, your freaking teeth get in the way, bro. What the hell? Heck? The hell um, heck? Yeah, <laughs> I, I edited myself. For the, yeah. Redacted. Oh. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> but no, I'm excited for season three. I'm excited to see how this sets us up for what we want to do in the future. What that means for getting more stories out of our community, mm. finding new theater communities to get stories out of, uh, and just giving people the opportunity to fall in love with their own voice, right? Mm. Awesome. I think I'm excited for that. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, I'm excited to see what that brings. Yeah, I'm looking forward to new guests. Yeah. Because yeah. I know we're going to have some outstanding guests. Yeah. And uh, and just having more fun. Brad with, Pitt? Well, you never know. No, no, that's season three. I just went over that. Oh, okay. Oh. Well, you never know. We <laughs> could get him here end of season two, <laughs> but probably more probably likely not. season three. Will be Brad Pitt. He's timeless, but you know, yeah. George Clooney. It's season, possible. Season three as well. It's possible. This is possible. Like nothing is impossible. Right. Right. Nothing is impossible if you believe. 
So, you know, we're going to have some fun. We'll just pay them to do cameos that we'll put on our <laughs> podcast. <laughs> we're we're going to have some fun. What, what's that app where you can get the, you can cameo. pay a cameo? Yeah. Yes. We'll just get like just, a bunch of ca- that's literally just what John just said. I, I did, I, just I you know what? Thing. It doesn't matter who says the joke. It matters who says it the loudest. So cameo. Aaron, true. Aaron wins. <laughs> well, no, it's true. I, I, I've gotten I many jokes over being the loudest one, not the first wow. one. you know. <laughs> Whatever. Aaron's looking forward to you talking myself. over John. I'm, I'm looking Every forward time. to you cutting this part out. <laughs> Especially the part where I spiked it. And got really loud. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, so that's that's three questions. We can end there. We can ask a couple more questions. We've gone on a long time. Scott, so I have a question to. for you. All right. You have asked every guest and people on the street and all of us, what does community mean to you? That is was kind of like the theme for season one. Yep. What is your question going to be for season two? What do you feel? What is, how does you clearly have learned something with that question, or else you wouldn't have asked it to everyone under the sun? Well, we have learned what community means to people, and it it and it varies, but I think it means to most people that it's it's a group of people getting together for a common goal and a common. Um, yeah, a, yeah, a common goal to to strive for and something to reach for to be, you know, better. Yeah. As a as a yeah. as a town, as a as a group, as a whole, as yeah. uh, for us as in our community theater to be, you know, to put on the best show we could possibly can. Um and and we try as hard as we can. So when people try they, you know, sometimes fail. Mm. It's true. You know, you don't always attain greatness. Yeah. But you learn something from that. And perhaps you redeem yourself. Ooh. So maybe, just maybe, maybe, we learn a little bit about redemption in season two. Like Red Dawn Redemption, like the maybe. Game? Well, the second game, the first game was terrible. So okay, yeah. I've never played it either. One. I haven't either. <laughs> <laughs> Neither have I. Just, but redemption. What is redemption? What does it mean to have redemption? To be redeemed? All of those terrible jokes from season one that I wish I could have taken back, but all the pearls that I left as well. I'm gonna redeem myself this season. You're gonna redeem yourself. My jokes are gonna be better. Yeah. That's how that's how John's gonna redeem himself. Yep. Is to have better jokes. And I appreciate that. Thanks, yeah, well, I think we all agree that that's, that's gonna I be think, better. I, yeah. Yes. Aaron, I just redacted your comment. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and I'm just gonna drop this. He doesn't pearl. need any word. My goal for this next season boop, is to be tied up in a bed in the misery play. Oh. Oh, so you're auditioning. I think I'm gonna. Yeah. Sweet. I think I'm gonna go like We're full get you throttle and Kelsey into it. back into the bed again. <laughs> Wouldn't that be so fun for that Kelsey and I did that? That'd oh be my really gosh, funny. that would be. I don't really know funny. if you could get her to come out for a straight show. I don't think she will. I don't know, but it would but be maybe, really I'm fun pretty to get straight. Back in I'm pretty bed. sure her uh, her eggs might be in a basket for uh, later in the season. Yeah, I mean, I know that, but it would still be fun to do. Mm. But yeah, so this has been a good episode, people. I'm excited to see your faces. Your faces so, are beautiful. My faces? Your faces. All of them. Uh, all of my faces. <laughs> my pants face. This, this, is, this is my pants face. This is your face. <laughs> I'm excited to get season two going again because, you know, yeah. I've missed being here. Should we play some bets on how often we talk about Spelling Bee now? No. Uh, is Spelling Bee now the Lord Voldemort yes. of shows? Yes. Well, Does that mean that we can drop the name Spamalot again? I think right. It'd be kind of fun okay. to have a swear jar. Oh. Kind of like a, like a, a bee jar. I like I like that idea. A bee jar. A bee jar. Yeah. Maybe uh, like get a roll of quarters for everyone. Put ten dollars mm-hmm. in to start, and right. mm-hmm. have to drop a quarter. And at the end of the season, we do the, a, the season. We uh, we spend on half a microphone. <laughs> 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 we buy we buy some green ones yeah. anyway there we yeah. go oh. uh, this has been the Back to Spares podcast the Back to Spares, uh, uh, the Back Spares. Spares. Back to Spares podcast with your host Aaron Schofield Scott Parsons and I'm John 
and I exist. Merry Christmas. This has been the Backstairs Podcast. Happy Chrysler. Happy Hanukkah. The okay, Backstairs let me try it again. This has been the Backstairs Podcast. The Backstairs Podcast. The Backstairs Podcast. The Backstairs Podcast. <laughs> This has been the Backstairs Podcast. You can stream the audio or video format of this episode anywhere that you listen to your podcasts. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube at The Backstairs Podcast. Send us an email at thebackstairspodcast at gmail.com. Redacted!